Well, welcome back, everyone, to the Adam Bro Podcast. Thank you so much for being a part. If you're watching this on YouTube, please leave a comment, like and share if you want. Um, if you are listening to this in audio form on your favorite podcast platform, please share it with others if you find the inf information useful. Uh, a little update on us. We've been traveling. Uh, as of today, the date is uh, we're in October of 2023. Been traveling quite a bit, doing some work with um, other believers and businesses, churches, things like that. So been quite busy as of late because we're starting to see that uh, many of us as believers are waking up to the fact that, you know, if you don't take care of this body that the Lord gave you, it's pretty hard to do what the Lord asked you to do. So, um, but it's been really good. Our family's in a good place. I am very thankful for where we are right now. I'm thankful for all that the Lord has done in our lives. And um, we're continuing just to grow uh, in business. We're growing in our ministry quite a bit. And um, we're seeing God do a lot of good things. So we're very, very, very thankful. Um, on the fitness front, staying staying in the gym, obviously, doing our best to keep things moving forward. Um, at my age, <laughs> my goals have changed quite a bit. Uh, I'm no longer trying to be as big and strong as possible, more just trying to maintain some good health, uh, see some good numbers put up on the bar, and continuing to you know, take care of things like mobility and things like that. Uh, just doing my best. I can't train as hard or as much as I used to, um, but I can put in what I can put in. So we're always doing our best. We're always putting forward our best foot. And we're going to continue to do jujitsu, which for me is an outlet for creativity, but it's also an outlet for cardiovascular uh, exercise. Also, it keeps me creative, keeps me thinking. And it's also an, like an indirect form of mobility because you're having to put yourself in weird positions, things like that. So it's also a community-based thing. So it, uh, it really does help me to get along with other people, helps me as a male find a place to put my aggression instead of people on the road or <laughs> people in a line somewhere. Um, so things are going really good for us. We're very thankful. God's been good. Uh, my wife is doing very well, and my daughter is uh, doing some homeschool hybrid, which has been a transition, but she has adapted quite well. She's extremely intelligent, very creative, and uh, we have found that spending more time together has really helped alleviate some of those teenage or preteen angst that were showing up and uh spending more time together is never going to be a negative um being the loudest most consistent voice in our child's life is definitely an investment we are willing to make whether monetarily or with time so i'm very thankful for where we are um i was thinking today on the topic we're going to talk about today kind of fits with uh some verses that i was thinking about and um, I wanted to share these verses with you. It comes from Matthew chapter uh, 25, which if, for those of you who read the Bible often or are in this space, you'll know Matthew 25 is kind of like Jesus is talking quite a bit in this chapter, and he's using a lot of parables. He is also um, speaking about maybe the future and what it could look like in the future, some of the things he's predicting um, that many of us as believers could say are starting to come to pass in these recent days, but people we've would, but we as believers have been saying that for a long time. I remember when debit cards came out. Okay. Like that's how old I am. Okay. I remember when debit cards came out at the, you know, when they first came out in the nineties and, um, you know, people were acting like this was the mark of the beast. You know, <laughs> we were, we were in revelation, bro, like a hundred percent. They got your number. Now this is going to, you know, then the euro came out and that was a consolidation of the one world currency. Uh, I just remember there's a lot going on. So a lot of people think we're in the end times and a lot of people have thought they were in the end times for a long time. But I'm just saying, hey, I'm a believer, whether I'm in those times or not, I don't care. I just know I just want to be in heaven. I want to serve Jesus with all my heart. I want to help as many people as possible. I'm not too hung up on time frames or anything like that. I just do my best. <laughs> to live the best life I can. Um, but in, in Matthew 25, in verse 14, we see what's called the parable of the talents or the bags of gold, depending on what version. I read the King James because it helps my ADD um, because the poetic language helps me 
stay engaged with what I'm reading. If I read it in just regular English, like NIV or even the English English Standard Version, or yeah, ESV, English Standard Version, um, I tend to drift off. So this helps me, but I'm not going to, I'll, I'll, I will not read it all in the King James, so you don't have to worry about the these and thous. Um, but we know from Matthew 14 all the way through verse, um, I mean, really, verse 30, so quite a long parable. The story is, the, the, the picture Jesus is painting here, he's painting the picture of a landowner. He says, for the kingdom of heaven is as a man traveling. So, um, when Jesus says the kingdom of heaven is like, he's using the simile to create a picture that's helping us uh, set a stage that would allow us to maybe find that picture in our lives as well. Okay, so he's using parables not to give necessarily give commands, but he's using parables to create pictures that then reinforce principles. Okay, at least this, I'm not a scholar, I'm not a theologian. There's plenty of people who know a lot more about the Bible than I do, but from my 30 plus years of reading it, this is how I interpret this, okay? And I tend to be pretty middle of the road on pretty much everything I do. So um, he's saying that this this landowner is going to travel off into a far country. And travel is important because we're going to talk about travel today, about how to stay healthy when we travel. And he says, who called his own servants and delivered unto them his goods. So he gave them something. He invested something into his servants, okay? Um, For for one, he gave them, from one guy, he gave five talents of gold, which we can say this is like maybe a measure. So he gave him five, just like five portions of gold. And to another servant, he gave two. And to another servant, he gave one, okay? so. This man in the picture here is planning to go somewhere and he wants to make sure that business is carried out on his behalf while he's gone. So he wants to invest into his servants in the hopes of getting a return on that investment. Okay. So it says he was gone for a long time. The guy who got five talents immediately went and started trading with that money. He took a risk. He took the risk. He started trading with that money and he gained five more. He doubled his money. Um, doesn't say what the time frame is because God's really, God's really sneaky about time frames because he knows how much we like to use them to predict things uh, and then start acting a fool <laughs> when we start predicting things. Um, so he says he gained five more. The guy with two did the same thing. He just went and he invested it. And he got two more. The guy with one was afraid, maybe poverty mentality, maybe just fear of taking a risk, but he buried that one talent in the ground. If if you've been around the Bible or been in church for any amount of time, you've heard this before, okay? So it says, but after a long time, the master returns or this landowner returns and he starts wanting accounts. Like he starts looking, at, he starts looking at the books. So he's like, okay, what did you do with the investment I put in you? Right. The first guy comes back. He's like, here, look, you gave me five. Here's five more. The landowner says, freaking awesome. Well done. My good and faithful servant, which is his way of saying you did exactly what you were supposed to do. The guy with two, same thing. Here's two more. Um, you know, is that good? You know, and then he's like, well done, good and faithful servant. Okay. So he's getting praised for just getting a return on the investment. You know, he he done, he's not even saying you could have done more, or you know, why did you only do this much? Or he's not, he's not even looking at the amounts necessarily. It's like he's just saying there's any investment. So the guy with one. It says, then he which received the one talent came and said, Lord, I knew thee, I knew that you were a hard man. Okay, so immediately my man comes with accusations, not results, all right? He says, you reap where you haven't sown and you gather where you haven't 
spread seed. Okay. So he's basing an accusation at this guy for his bad results. All right. So it says, and I was afraid. See, now we get to the truth. I was afraid. And I went and hid the talent in the earth. So here is what is yours. All right. And the Lord answered, Lord, lowercase l, the Lord answered him and said, and he's pretty rough with him. He said, you wicked and slothful, meaning lazy servant. You knew that I reap where I didn't sow and gather where I didn't sow seed. He said, you should have therefore put my money with the exchangers or in the bank, you should have invested it in the bank and at least drawn interest from it. Therefore, I could have gotten something. And he says, take this man from here, take the money he has, give it to the guy who has five. And he says, for unto everyone that has shall more be given and he shall have an abundance. But from him that does not have shall be taken away even what he does have. Okay, so this is, this is actually a pretty rough scripture when you think about it. But um, the idea that um, he which has, he that has something will gain more. And he that doesn't have, even the little bit he does have, will be taken from him. Economists use this. This is how this is how the economy works. If you have more money, you can make more money. If you have less money, it's hard to make more money with that, right? So the little amount you have, it's harder to make more. So economists do use this. Um but is it, I don't think Jesus is being tough here. I think I think what the story is the principle that I'm taking from this and then of course this is this is a health-based podcast is that if we really think about our lives um Every person is born with a certain level of health, you know, depending on your circumstances, depending on your parents, depending on a lot of situations, everybody is given a certain sum of health, okay, from birth. And then it is up to us to take that sum that I've been given and invest into it, try to grow it, try to expand it, try to get something out of it that would be seen as investment into what the Lord has given me, all right? Um, In the scripture here in Matthew 25, he's not even worried about the amount. He's worried that there's something, right? So I like to think of this as, in terms of health, is that you've been given something. what What is holding you back from investing in it? Is it fear? Uh, are you blaming others? Are you blaming your circumstances? Are you blaming like the the guy with the third guy with the one talent? He blamed, he bl- basically blamed God for his situation on why he didn't need to do anything, right? And he's rightfully so the Lord called, you know, the Lord in that passage calls him lazy and evil because to blame God for your situation is to be lazy and to not see that being alive in itself is a miracle, no matter the situation. So um, what is it? What, what is it in your world that is holding you back from investing in the thing the Lord gave you? What is it in your life that is stopping you from risking investing in your health? Because it is a risk, right? You could get it wrong. You could not do it. You could... You could miss out on other things. You could, um, you know, waste money, waste time even, which many people do. But what is it that's stopping you? And this is, when I ask these questions, I'm, you know, I, I think preachers ask these questions rhetorically many times, like, what's doing it? But I really am asking directly, what is stopping you? And you need to ask yourself that question and not judge the answer. This dude, even though he blamed the master, he at least was honest in the end. He said, I was afraid. So at least we got a little bit of honesty out of it. He was afraid. What was he afraid of? We don't know yet. He was afraid that God was going to be hard on him. He was afraid that he was going to fail. 
He was afraid that he was not going to meet expectations, which who hasn't had that fear? My God in heaven. So, but none of those fears absolved him of what God expected. And none of my fears, none of your fears, absolve us from walking in faith, absolve us from investing in our health and taking care of ourselves, and basically seeing the value in what God has given us. Okay? So, today I want to encourage you. God has placed some form of blessing and health into your life. Take the time to invest in it. He said the least you could have done was put the money with the banker. So what's the least you can do today? Like, I'm not even asking you to do your best. I'm asking you to do the least. What is the least you could start with? Would it be go for a walk? Would it be uh, instead of stopping by McDonald's to eat, maybe drive down the road to a sandwich shop that actually has, you know, ingredients (laughs) ingredients <laughs> and they're not chemical chemical waste that can last for 10 years under your seats with no refrigeration right what is the least we can do today and then we start moving in that direction we start repeating that minimal effort okay so let me encourage you you are worth it god has a plan for your life he really wants you to thrive and he really wants to see a return on the investment he put into your life okay Don't make excuses for yourself and don't blame others for your situation. Remember, nobody's coming to save you. Only you have the, only you can control where you are right now. Only you can control where your health is. Only you have the power to change your life. No one else can do it for you. All right. Not even God. He can't change your life if you're not willing to. Okay. So let's talk real quick. We're going to switch gears. I was a little heavy. (laughs) Sorry. (laughs) Sorry. Um, We're going to switch gears. You know, I've traveled for years. Uh, We were missionaries for years. I've worked in, I've been overseas. Uh, I've been traveling overseas since I was about 19 years old, 46 now. And we use, I think I've gone on some type of international trip uh, almost every year, Uh, multiple, many times, just multiple trips a year. Uh, I think I've been to more countries than I have states. Um, So we've been blessed. We've traveled around the world, but I also have traveled domestically quite a bit um, for churches, for nonprofits, uh, raising funds, and even now doing my own business where we travel to meet with churches and their staffs and work to help educate them around health, educate them around longevity for ministry's sake, keeping people in the game longer and, you know, working to stop seeing videos go viral of whatever lunacy pastors and church people are getting into. All right. So I've traveled quite a bit and I've stayed healthy relatively um, through all of that. I've stayed relatively lean. I've kept my muscle mass. I rarely get sick. Um, I don't wear a mask when I travel like some people do strangely. Um, I don't wear a mask in my car specifically because that would be like, you know, <laughs> that's dumb. Well, that'd be like wearing a seatbelt when you're just walking around and you're not in your car. You know, it just doesn't make sense. So the danger is not there. Stop protecting yourself from the danger that's not there. All right. The Bible actually says the, the wicked flee from, from an enemy that does not pursue. So, you, you know, definitely if you have faith in the Lord, you shouldn't be living in fear of illness. But I've traveled all this time and there's a few things that I have done that I've learned over these years that have helped me to stay fit when the schedule and situation was not optimal. Okay? So I'm going to give you a few tips, maybe 10 or so of things that could help you stay fit when you travel. And this goes a lot for pastors, this goes a lot for people who go on vacation regularly or somehow are out of pocket out of their normal rhythm regularly. Um, You know, travel can be exciting. It's an enriching experience. Uh, It can also disrupt your regular health and fitness routines, right? It's also a disruptive force Um, from, you know, it can be from indulging in new cuisines to being confined in long hours to sitting in planes and cars. 
um, letting your habits slip basically when you're on the road, which I will explain a little bit about habit. However, with some mindful planning and simple strategies, you can stay healthy and fit during your travels. Uh, we're going to talk about a few tips, okay? So the first thing to do when you are traveling, the first thing you want to do is you want to have a plan. You want to have an idea of what's going on, okay? So for instance, I will be going to Texas tomorrow, actually. All right, to be at a conference with some good friends of mine, great ministry partners who I help with their staff. And um, we're going to be at a conference. So few things go into conferences, right? I have to travel to get there, which is a pain in the butt. I'm above average size, so I don't fit in any seat. The only seat I fit in is business class, and I can't afford that. So <laughs> I don't plan on being cramped. Um, so couple of things I know. I'm going to be traveling. I am going to be tired. I'm going to be a little out of pocket on my food. The gym at the hotel will undoubtedly be lackluster unless the hotel we are staying in has, you know, is premium, which again, can't afford that. So, um, and I'm going to not be on my normal sleep schedule. All right. So, the, so I need to have a plan. First thing is to know what I'm getting myself into. So I need to have a plan. I need to find out where the gym is. All right. And, and if the gym is in the hotel, what's, what's the goal for the gym? Okay. I'm going to give you a couple of ideas of what's the goal for the gym. All right. When we go, when we work out on the road, which you should, uh, too many people come to me and like, when I'm on the road, I don't do anything. Well, why don't you? Well, why don't you, you know, unless, unless somebody else is specifically curating your schedule for you, you should be in control of your schedule. So therefore don't make an excuse for yourself. Okay. Uh, well, I'm, when I'm on the road, I'm out of, I'm out of pocket. So when your kid gets sick, you get out of pocket, right? So it's, it, to me, it is a, it's a non-starter when people start saying the, the travel is too hard. I've done it for a decade and a half. Okay. You can do it. So you need to have a plan. When you go to the gym, you need to pay attention to how you feel. Are you excessively tired? Okay, if you are, your workout just needs to be light. When we go to the gym, the goal is to not make progress on the road, re really. The goal is to reinforce habits, okay? We're reinforcing the habit of being in the gym, even when I don't want to, and circumstances are not ideal for that, all right? So, for instance, I'll go, I'm going to, I train today. I'll be pretty sore, I think, because I'm on a new training program and um, I'm going to be a little beat up. Okay. I'm expecting it. See, I'm thinking through what the situation is going to be. I'm going to be a little beat up. So I'll probably go into the gym at the hotel. I'll assess it. If I can get, if I can lift weights, I will. Um, but I'll probably go really light. Uh, I'll probably do some type of cardio on the treadmill and walk uphill for 30 minutes, you know, get some good cardio in, get a lot of steps in, and I'll probably do some type of light dumbbell workout. No real, I don't need a real plan. I just need to check the box off that I was in the gym because it reinforces the habit of being there. I'm not planning on making gains. I'm not planning on losing weight or anything like that. I'm just planning to check the box, okay? And then I leave and I go eat a good breakfast and I just move on with my day. Okay. So when you're on the road, you need to have a plan. You have an idea of what's going on. Okay. Another thing you need to try to do is you need to start to stay hydrated. Okay. Hydration can be a common issue during travel, especially if you're in a hot climate or on long flights. Um, that recycled air is constantly drying you out in your plane. So make sure you drink plenty of water throughout your journey and stay properly hydrated. The Institute of Medi Medicine recommends somewhere like nine, nine to 13 cups or let's say two to three liters of water for an adult. You know, so basically you want to make sure you have some way of drinking water. Uh, I would recommend when you're on your flights, don't drink a ton of booze. Don't drink a ton of coffee. Um, they're, they are diuretics. 
in and of themselves. They do dehydrate you. And I would avoid sodas just because you're not a child. Yes, I said it. You're not a child. You don't need your sugary drinks when you're sitting down. Okay? Remember, remember we're trying to focus on our health, not make excuses for ourselves. Okay? So stay hydrated. And another thing is, another thing, so we need to have a plan for our training. But then we also need to understand our meals. Plan your meals wisely to the best of your ability. All right? So if you're traveling alone and you are meeting groups of people, you should have some form of autonomy to pick the place you're going to eat. Nice, nice fly going right through my screen here. Um, if you have no choice, then when you get to the restaurant, you do the best you can. Okay? These are my goals when I'm on the road. Okay? One, if I can choose the place to eat, I will. I will. I don't care. If somebody says, hey, where do y'all want to eat? I will pipe up because I have goals. Some of y'all might not have goals, so it shouldn't matter where we eat, right? If you're willing to eat, you know, basic, basically just junk, you should be willing to eat something good too, right? Unless you just have an aversion to good food. Um, but if people ask, where do y'all want to eat? You put your hand up and you just be that person. You say, can we pick something relatively healthy? You know, somewhere where I can get some type of relatively clean protein and some form of vegetable. That's it, right? Those, that's what I eat when I'm on the road. I'm, I'm going to be basically meat and veg. All right? I'm not going to go eat the bread basket. I'm not going to Olive Garden because it's got all you can eat breadsticks. Uh, I'm not going to Five Guys if I can help it. You know what I mean? Like you're, you're just making the best choice you can. Now, if I can choose the place, I almost always choose a steak restaurant, um, something like an Outback or some place where I can get a relatively good quality steak um, and some form of vegetable, right? And the way I tell them to cook it is I'm like, hey, can you just use salt, no oils on my steak? And I just tell them I'm allergic because they make me sick <laughs> and cheap oils will make you sick. So you're not lying. Um but then also I say, hey, whatever vegetable I pick, can we? Can you just steam it or can you roast it? But I don't want any oils. I don't want you adding all that stuff on it. Okay, just bring it to me. I'll salt it. And then if I need some type of olive oil or something to go on, I'll put that myself. All right, so we, you need to have a plan for your meals. You don't just let somebody else dictate where you're eating if you have a choice. Now, if somebody else is dictating, like and you end up at some type of pizza joint or um, pasta house or something that's, you know, relatively junky, you just make the best of the situation. Okay. You're always choosing the best. So if you go into, let's say they're like, Hey, we're going to get five guys. Okay, great. I'm going to try to see if I can get the burger with no bun and I'm going to avoid the fries. So I might actually get, make my burger bigger so that I can get more protein in, um, maybe put some bacon on it because why not? And then I'm going to get try to get it wrapped in lettuce. Why? Because I need my protein to be high. I want to keep my refined carbohydrates low um, because they don't help you when you're on the road, especially. And when you're already sleep deprived, you're not sleeping well. It just doesn't help the immune system function very well. So if you're already tired, you're already sleep deprived, you're not eating the best because you're maybe you're not in, con in control, you want to make sure that you are setting yourself up to win. So ramming French fries and ketchup down your gullet, uh, along with a bacon double cheeseburger, bun and everything, taking in 1500 calories, um, it's just not going to be beneficial. All right. So you just do your best to make the, the most of the situation you're in. Okay. And it's hard. You need to be okay with people who are unhealthy looking at you funny for you being healthy. That's the kind of culture we live in right now where um, the norm is to be sick and it's abnormal to not be sick and pursuing things that are sick inducing, okay? So you just need to be okay with it. Another thing is um, you can also pack snacks with you that help you avoid uh, junk eating. What, do I, what would I pack? 
Um, I would always I would go to the grocery store if I can go to the grocery store, pick up apples, pick up blueberries, um, beef jerky, uh, maybe some almonds, something that's relatively healthy that I can snack on throughout the day. I like to pick up uh, if if I'm just looking for a snack and I'm going somewhere else. Everybody thinks you have to pull through a restaurant. Go to a grocery store. Get you a Greek yogurt. Get you, get you a Greek yogurt and a pack of blueberries. It's going to cost you five bucks. Okay? And there you have your snack. It's, you don't have to go through a drive-thru. You don't have to go to a gas station. You, you, you literally can go wherever you want. <laughs> so you should. All right? So... Plan snacks ahead of time. I actually make my own beef jerky. I, I buy like steak. I cut it up, salt it, like cut it up real thin, salt it, put it in the, put it in on a cookie sheet with some parchment paper. And I cook it in the oven at, at 350 for like 20, 30 minutes. It just dries it out, make my own jerky. There's nothing added. It's just salt and steak. It can be whatever steak you want. Chuck roast works really well. Um, or any other type of steak that you like, all right? I prefer a little bit fattier cut of meat, so I'll choose like a chuck roast or something like that. Some people choose a flat iron steak, whatever you want. I know it's more, it's expensive, but if you try to buy, a, let's say you buy a nice bag of uh, like say Jack Links, which are cheap, okay? You're gonna spend eight bucks, sometimes 12, okay? For a good bag of them. You could get chuck roast for like $4 a pound. So I could make like two pounds roughly before it's dried out of beef jerky for the same price. And there's no additives. There's no sugar added. There's no junk added to it. So sometimes it's a matter of just being prepared and willing to do a little work, okay? Another thing you can do is just monitor your portions. Just don't be a glutton. Right, just because everybody else is ramming food in their face doesn't mean you have to. All right. Another thing when it comes to that, when you're traveling, is uh, monitoring your alcohol consumption. If you are trying to be healthy, and a lot of people who listen to this, I would imagine, are, and you're in the ministry, one, you need to live by example. Two, so don't be getting hammered. Let me just be real with you. Don't be getting hammered. I've got lots of friends. Not lots. I've got some friends who control their alcohol really well. I've got others who, when they get, they start, when they get with a group of people, they lose their minds. I'm going to tell you, it's a bad testimony. I don't care. I, I, I don't, I don't care. I don't care if you have a great church. I don't care if you are, you know, just blowing off steam. You need to find another way to blow off steam besides, you know, getting hammered with your friends. All right. It's not healthy and it's not a good testimony. I'm just being honest with you. Um, I have done it myself. I have. I'm guilty of it. I'm not judging anyone, but the Lord convicted me of it. The Lord convicted me of using food and substances as a crutch rather than faith and sitting with my own discomforts. Okay. So you shouldn't be using your food or alcohol as a crutch to get through any particular situation, all right? So just monitor that, do your best when you're on the road, okay? Especially because you're out of pocket, people might not know you, you might feel like you're free to do whatever, that's great, but just be smart, okay? Um, also, another thing to do is when you're on the road, when you're traveling, keep your steps up, stay active, keep moving. It's gonna help you reset, it's gonna help you sleep better at night, it's going to make sure you're burning calories. If you are kind of overeating or you're in a situation where you can't really choose the best, um, well, getting more steps in helps to kind of helps to offset some of the maybe damage you've done, right, to your calories for the day, all right? So just staying a little active really helps. Taking the stairs as often as you can. If you're in a hotel, asking for a floor that's higher, is a big deal. I've done that before. Um, I've been in hotels where they're like, hey, we've got you on the third floor. I'm like, well, can I get somewhere near the, you know, the top floors where I don't have to pay more? I don't have to pay more to be on those floors. Um, because they'll be like, if you want to go to the top floor, it's like the penthouse. Well, I don't want that. I just need to be higher. So can I get on the 10th floor? 
And I'll try to take the stairs. Even if taking the stairs up is too exhausting for you, you can take the stairs down. There, that way you're still getting more steps in. All right, so be smart. All right, be active to the best of your ability. Remember, you're trying to set up habits here of health and investment into what the Lord's given you. And if you're traveling to do you know, the very ministry that God has given you, or you're on vacation because you're blessed, to, you know, make enough money to go on vacation, which many people do not. I've lived overseas. Many people never go on vacation in their lives. So first world problems, let's just be honest. Um, you want to make sure you're not taking this blessing and using it as a detriment. Okay. So we're always trying to invest in our health. If you're on long flights, remember we said stay active. So another one is if you're on long flights, get up, move around on the flight, take some stretches. If you're driving for long periods of time, stop at a rest here, walk around, stretch. Uh, I know some guys are like, we don't stop ever. Even if you have to pee, hold it, get over yourself. All right. Stop being a maniac. I used, I used to work with a guy who he would do that. He'd be like, we're not stopping. I don't care how bad you have to pee. I'm like, I will pee on you. If you don't stop this car right now, I'm telling you right now, I will make a mess of this car. Which would you prefer, stopping or cleaning up urine? Right? I'm I'm not afraid. Right? So if you're if you if you are traveling with that person, just be prepared for a little bit of pushback. All right. But moving around on long flights, I'm that guy on a flight. I always get an aisle seat so I can get up. So I can get up and move around. I walk to the back. I talk to the to the stewards, I, I sit in a galley a little bit until they ask me to leave. Uh, I'll go to the restroom. I just move around. Why? Because it helps my blood circulation and helps me not lose my mind. Okay. Another thing is, is when you're on the road, this is a really big one. When you're on the road, the next one would be work on your sleep, protect your sleep to the best of your abilities. If you're not in charge of the schedule, um, there's not much you can do there, but you can make sure that you're not staying up later than necessary. Okay. So if for some reason you're not in charge of your sleep habits and people are like, Hey, but we're still going to go out. Hey, we're done working and it's, you know, seven or eight o'clock, but we're going out for drinks. You need to decide, do I need to go out for drinks? Is this, is this going to be really good socially or is sleep going to be better for me? Um, usually I'll, I just balance between those two. Some days on some trips, like the trip I'm about to go on, I'll stay out relatively late. And then the next day I'll sleep in like, or, or I'll go to bed earlier the next day. Right. So I'm trying to balance it. So I'm, I'm not always, I'm not just going out the whole time um, because I don't want to get sick. I, I, I love you, but I don't love you enough right now to feel like dump the whole next day. Okay. So you can balance those things out, but you want to try to protect your sleep to the best of your ability. Um, turning the TV off or not using screens in the hotel room. Um, bringing a little roll of tape. This is, this is a travel hack, bringing a real little roll of electrical tape, like black tape or even duct tape and putting, putting it over the lights anywhere in the room, right? Because somehow they're just like people, whoever makes these hotel rooms, they're like, sure, you don't need to sleep. All these flashing lights in your room shouldn't disturb you at all. And I'm like, ah, uh, <laughs> the, when the lights go out and I close the, the blackout curtains, that fire alarm, little blinky LED is really bright. So I'll put a piece of tape over it. Um, if there's a alarm clock next to me, I'll unplug it and just use my phone, right? That way it's not shining light into the room. So I'm protecting my sleep to the best of my ability. Okay. So another thing you want to work on is making sure that you are either eating in a controlled way or not you know, not going out like for breakfast. Okay. So the big, a big thing that I find is that when you go to travel, people just make concessions for themselves. They're like, Oh, well, I can't choose this. I can't. 
it, it, I'm traveling, so I, I guess I just have to eat this. You don't have to do anything, all right? You are an adult. You can choose what is best for you. So um, my last point would be err on the side of health in every situation. Err on the side of health in the best situation, right? So if you're going, to, if if the hotel you're at only has some garbage continental breakfast that is basically bagels, uh, low fat, sweetened yogurts, and cereal, that's not food. That, that is not food. That's garbage. So I'm not putting that in my body. So what would I do? I would just not eat. I'm, it's better to go without food than to fill your stomach with trash. Because hunger never killed nobody uh, from missing one meal. Plenty of people have starved to death. Yes, throughout history. That's really sad. But nobody died from missing breakfast one time. All right? But plenty of people continue to wreck their health by settling for trash food when you have a choice. All right? You have a choice on how you live. You have a choice on what goes into your body. And let me just be honest with you. Just because something can be ingested does not make it food. Just because somebody puts out some things that can go in your body and calls it breakfast or calls it lunch or calls it dinner does not make it food. Okay? Remember, you, <laughs> you are what you eat. Literally. You break those, that food down and it becomes you. All right? So I can feed you pennies. Does that mean you're going to become pennies? No, you're just going to poop those out, all right? Just because it comes on a spoon or a fork doesn't mean it's not poison, okay? So the last point, like I said, is to always err on the side of health, no matter what the choice, no matter the workout, no matter the gym, no matter the place you're eating, no matter the situation, no matter the peer pressure, you're always erring on the side of health when you travel. Because if you want to continue to travel, let's say you do this for work, if you want to continue to travel for work and be healthy, then you have to err on the side of health. Otherwise, you do cut yourself short. If you're a pastor and you travel regularly to speak at other churches and you eat like a child whenever you're on the road, but you're on the road every, every few weeks, you need, you, need some, you need some priorities. You need to prioritize your health. You need to err on the side of health. Okay? I have a friend, not a close friend, but he traveled for work too, 30-something years old, just had a heart attack. He's obese, travels for work, eats whatever's cheapest, eats whatever's most convenient, doesn't sleep, doesn't, doesn't guard his health at all. He's obese, had a heart attack. He's got beautiful little kids. It's, it's, it's not that difficult, all right? The road is not set up for your health. You have, to, you have to force it, okay? Everything you do when you travel is set up for convenience. It's not set up for your health. So stop erring on the side of convenience, err on the side of health, okay? So when you travel, you don't have to be sick. You don't have to feel like dump. You don't have to gain weight when you travel. Who knew? I have plenty of clients who travel for a living and they lose weight when they travel. Why? Because they just refuse to eat the junk, okay? So traveling is a gift. It's fun. It's also disruptive and, come, and can be problematic. So let me encourage you, when you travel, Make sure you take care of yourself, all right? It is a blessing. Make sure it is a blessing to your body. Make sure you're doing your best to mitigate damage. Do what you can to continue to do what God's called you to do. And if you need help with any of this, um, we, are, we are open to consultations. If you need help thinking through strategies for yourself, you can email me at adam at adambro.com. Um, if you are needing help with, your health in general. You can check out my book on Amazon. Uh, just type in my name and then faith and fitness and the book will come right up. It is very, very short read. It's only about, you know, I think under a hundred pages and it's going to give you the basics of what you need. But if you travel in general and you need help, um, just email me and we'll set up a time to chat. I promise you, we can uh, always help you to the best of our, to the best of our ability to come up with a strategy that will 
add value to you and help you move forward, okay? Uh, as always, it's a pleasure to serve you. Uh, check us out on Instagram, just my name, Adam at Adam Bro. Or on you can check us out on TikTok as well. It's Adam underscore bro. Um, or on YouTube, we love you. Uh, we appreciate you. We appreciate your time. And if there's uh, any way that we can serve you better, please do not hesitate to reach out and let us know. All right. Have a great day.